Hi, everyone. My name is Alex. Um, I'm the founder of Lazarus. I'm going to bring you back to some very special moment for me, 1986. This was Christmas 1986. Super special day for me. Uh, we had just moved back from Nigeria, uh, and under the tree were two giant boxes. And as a small kid, those boxes looked really big. Uh, it was an Amstrad CPC 6128. You, you guys may remember that. It was great because it has a floppy disk drive. That was fast. Uh, I was fascinated by it. And it took me years to really understand how to build on it, because I was just a kid. Uh, but it took me on a defining path. And I've seen the birth and the evolution of the internet, the GPUs, mobile phones. And since the mid-90s, I've been building hardware and software and businesses just to try new things and develop new ideas. My first um, encounter with Bitcoin uh, was in 2013. I bought my first Bitcoin. It was super challenging. I felt like I was doing something illegal. Uh, in 2016, I started building on blockchain uh, after Ethereum, another protocol, introduced a programming language that basically lets you run software on blockchain. I was mind-blowing at the time. And I find that blockchain is probably one of the most exciting revolutions I've been a part of. It, because it's a revolution for the first time that didn't start in a lab. It didn't start in corporate America. It literally is rooted into internet forums and local communities. And that's really the first time that a technology has such impact and wasn't built by a company. In 2018, I founded Azurus. Um, it's a crypto that you can add to your Twitch streams. We watch along. Uh, we quiz fans about uh, what is happening, what has happened on your stream. If they get it right, they can earn credits, and they can redeem them from, for cool goods in the Azurus store. Um, we basically reward fandom and attention so that creators uh, have a more committed audience and basically build communities, helping them stand out uh, and grow the channel. It's even become a family affair. My wife has a startup in space. My kid is uh, building crypto bots. He spent the whole last summer doing that. So it's really getting like ad the adoption is increasing and everybody's getting passionate about what is possible to build on that new uh, on the new protocol. I love crypto, but not everybody really loves it. Uh, not everybody shares my view, understandably so. Gamers are super vocal about uh, their concerns when it comes to cryptos and NFTs. And if you look at Twitter, it's madness. Uh, so much hate over there. If you watch the news, also you've seen the stories about the dark side, the dark underbelly of crypto, how it's been used uh, to fund harmful ventures. Everybody remember the Silk Road. And to this day, it still has a terrible impact on the environment. Um, but I want to make the case today that crypto isn't inherently good or bad. It's a technology. It's actually a neutral technology. It's a tool which is still today in its infancy. And when, as humans, we apply our ethics to it, that tool is used to create either adverse or positive impact. Take, for example, nuclear fission. Uh, it can be used to, create, to provide clean energy. That was the first use case of nuclear fission, actually, uh, until Einstein and Sildab suggested it could be used uh, to create a bomb in 1939. Not so cool. But ultimately, any technology is at the mercy of its user. And crypto is no different. To that, day, to that end, we need to have a larger conversation today about how Cryptocurrency will play a role in our future and develop ethics and healthy structures around how we should be using it. Again, pardon my cheesy metaphor, but back uh, to kids and parenting. This is like really about parenting. Uh, do you know that Bitcoin today is a teenager? He needs parenting. My son is 15 and, when he, and he loves hanging on rocks. So he started caving, climbing, bouldering. At some point, he wanted to do cliff jumping. That was no. This is, this is it, no cliff jumping. That's way too dangerous. Uh, and this is really 
where we are, we're seeing basically cryptocurrency moving out of its infancy and into adulthood. And we need to remember, it's not a fully functioning adult yet. Uh, and we need to put rules in place so that we can help that technology develop into something that brings value to the society at large. It has so much potential, and really, the only thing it needs is guidance. And I want to start today by eliminating a few benefits and a few changes that we're already starting to see in cryptocurrencies today and how it's already being used in productive and positive ways. I believe that these current efforts can serve as a guiding principle, really, um, in how we seek to harness the power of crypto in the future. First, I want to address again that, that, that story about the fact that it's not green and not clean energy, and Bitcoin is using as much energy as a few countries. But there have been efforts, and this problem has been solved to make an environmentally friendly crypto. After the Paris Climate Agreements, actually, uh, the whole crypto community came together and, uh, and created the Crypto Climate Accord uh, to work to develop proof of green solutions. So literally, we are decarbonizing cryptocurrency right now as we speak. A lot, like hundreds of companies have signed those accords and are going to be carbon neutral in the next five years. Not just by buying carbon credits, by changing the way the protocol works, by changing the way the computers are being run. And at Azure, we're already carbon neutral. So it, it is happening. This change is made possible by the engineering. And in fact, again, this is a technology. And a technical problem only has one outcome. Someone will solve it. Technology is evolving, and solving issues like this is just the, a part of the journey. The second reason I'm really optimistic about crypto is that it really helps com connect communities together, bring members together. It provides a sandbox, basically, to build an ecosystem where contributions of all kinds towards a common goals are rewarded. The word we often use is the, uh, the word of incentive. It's an alignment of incentives. Uh, and when it's done in an open, in open sandbox, it's one of the most powerful motivators for every member of the community. There are communities for everyone. Um, Maybe you like soccer, you can go and uh, start collecting players and engage with other collectors and build your, fan, your favorite team. You would like to play video games. Uh, YGG is going to teach you how to play blockchain games, give you the, uh, the, uh, the items you need, get you set up, share knowledge. Step in for exercise. I'm personally involved in a community called Tough Guys, uh, which is an NFT collection focusing on mental health uh, and giving back through charity. There's literally communities for everyone. And one of the things that I find most phenomenal about those communities and those, um, and those projects is that they always start by building the community. First, you find folks that care about what you're trying to achieve, then you build the product. And that's one of the big changes that blockchain has brought to building projects. Through crypto, you can really enable community. You can enable communities and build full ecosystems. And this is changing our digital experience. We crave authentic communities based on shared experiences, and the crypto emphasizes that by a bunch. The third reason that crypto has incredible potential impact um, is that it decentralizes power out of government, governments and large organizations. It gives control to the users. I really believe that this is a good thing because that concentration of power has become blinding in many ways. And crypto is only powerful as its many users. Um, if people were to stop using it, it would just disappear, but people keep coming back and chiming in and getting engaged. And that diversity of stakeholders with in aligned incentives is one of the most powerful force of what's being built today on blockchain. The token really acts as a glue between the community, connecting incentives, and you all may have heard the word DAO, Decentralized Automaton, Autonomous Organization. 
So this is really what's powering all those projects and all those initiatives, the fact that it's not a company building it, it's the people. Just a few weeks ago, uh, one of the big protocols out there who did an ICO for a couple billion dollars a few years ago, well, the community didn't like really much where this was heading. Uh, and they just decided to cut out that company that was behind like the first version of the, uh, of the protocol. It's said, enough, you're not doing a good job. We're taking from here. And this was made possible because they had the power, they had the tokens. And it's really like a David and Goliath story, but we're going to be seeing so many of those because again, big governments, big corporations do not have all the power anymore. And those are tools that we put in the hands of members, communities, to have a voice and use it. The, the way I like to, 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 to frame it is to say that basically blockchain is to businesses and organizations what open source has been to code. It's really bringing transparency to all interactions between stakeholders. At the end of the day, I, I believe that we'll see this technology grow into an essential tool for society. Part of growing up is making mistakes and floundering. But it's not the mistakes that define a person. It's how we respond and grow afterwards. It will be the same for crypto. Albert Einstein talked about that bomb earlier. He knew better than most the horrific power that technology could have. And he once said, all our louder technological progress of very civilization is like the ax in the hand of a pathological criminal. That's pretty, uh, pretty deep, but so true. So I hope that you can see that beyond its many current flows that are undeniable, uh, we can focus on its merits and the myriad way that the technology can and is already used for good. As builders, users, and contributors, it's our role to mold its true structure and ethical guidelines. There are many ways that you can get involved. Immerse yourself in those communities, add your unique value, passion, and creativity, and trust the technology. Technology is just a tool. It's what you make of it that matters. Build apps that value transparency, collaboration, shared principle, and find ways to reward and engage your ecosystem at large. Just think about how it could change your business today. Because I'm a nerd at heart, uh, I'm going to leave you with that final reminder from, uh, from Uncle Ben on Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility. Thank you. <laughs>